Okay. Is it 3 o'clock yet, Frank? No, it's 2.59. They have not rung the bell yet. We're having a, a minor rally at the end of the day here. We're recording right now, just so you know. Okay, I'll be on good behavior. <laughs> There's the bell. Okay. The bell. All right. So welcome, everyone, to today's Option View Essentials. We're going to have a wonderful guest speaker and one of our head coaches, Frank Fahey, and former floor trader. We'll be talking today about Option View uh, Essentials, searching for underlyings to trade with, and we're in the heat of the earnings season right now, and I think Frank's going to show us some really cool trades uh, that in the hot season and try and try and give us a rundown of uh, some good earnings plays, I think. Aren't you going to show that to well, us today? Well, no. I've, I, actually, I, I tend to be a little wary of earnings plays, but uh, I, I wouldn't say that I'm going to show people good earnings plays, but I'll show them how I find what's where the earnings are occurring and how there we I, go. I select them at times. There's a difference because – I tend to do the same thing again and again and again. I go through stages where I trade earnings, but we have students that do. Uh, part of what goes on with us is we try to find out what we're good at trading, and we all have different skill sets. Just like we uh, traders have different strategies and environments they trade better in, just like some people have different athletic events or music skills. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of it's just identifying what we are and uh, – Option view helps us helps me do that because we have so much data out there that trying to condense or condense all that da data to a lowest common denominator is a trick. I mean, it's coming from everywhere. So what it does is the the trick for me is to always figure out how do I convert this data to information, something that means something. Mm -hmm. So one of the, the and we'll get into this, but um, so and I'm going to talk about earnings, though, and and quite often what's important is when we're trading is knowing if earnings are going to occur and being able to not trade if we have an earnings environment taking place. So I'm I'm going to go in here and uh, okay, and this is who I am. Karen was very nice. Uh, <laughs> I, I first started trading. Well, actually, this is who I used to be. Uh, this it, has been just so Hollywood wonderfully Hollywood makeup airbrushed. does wonders, yeah. <laughs> it it really does, Karen. Thank God. But, uh, I went down on the floor in 1984 after working for IBM and digital equipment for, gosh, about 10 years. I was in sales. I was in solution sales for them, uh, selling. Gosh, I have somebody next door uh, mowing a lawn. I can but, hear that, actually. <laughs> oh, I, I, I know. But actually, I can close a window. Gosh, you know. I should law, have put yeah. <laughs> Why don't you go ahead and close the window? I think it would help. Oh, it's a bit of a difference. So uh, it would help immensely. So okay. I, I came down to the floor, gosh, almost 30 years ago and started as a market maker. I was a floor trader on at the CBOE, the Chicago Board Options Exchange, for about, oh gosh, 20 years. And then I went to the Chicago Board of Trade where I worked as a, a trader or a market maker in the weed options pit. So I, I, trust me, I've made money and lost money every way imaginable. Right now we have tools that allow us to, to give me information that I never had as, mm -hmm. a, uh, as a trader when I was on the floor. I mean, when I first came down, all I had was a calculator, a pencil, and uh, a trading <laughs> card. It, it changed a lot. Oh, yeah, things have changed. So I do like to say that chance favors only the prepared mind. And chance is which way the market's going to move, which way implied volatility is going to move or has moved, and, and that is chance, because I'm, quite frankly, I, I'm not real good at predicting it. Some people are. Uh, there's people that have the, the gift of technical analysis. I don't have it. I have the gift of trading discipline. And so what I tr use option view for is to prepare my mind. Now, 
please understand that anything I say here is meant to be used for educational purposes or for train you know for training purposes. I don't want mm-hmm. you to say, well, Frank said do this. So I went out and did it, and I'll go, oh, my God. You know, it's, it's, for example, right now we have uh, LinkedIn is announcing uh, their earnings momentarily, and I, I have no idea, you know, what's going on there right now. But, you know, we may use that as an example. But part mm-hmm. of the trading is going through alternate scenarios of what might happen. It's what if, what if, what if this happens, what if that happens, what if I use this strike price, what if, the, would I sell the option, if I buy the option, if the stock goes up, the stock goes down, time changes. I mean, I mean and I could show you real quick what that looks like. Uh, just on almost, this is option view right here. And we have something called the analyze button. But I could do just well, real quick right now where I could just, and, and this is just an example of the the power of option view, and uh, I like it. Here, I'm going to clear trades. This is, gosh, so easy that even a trader can use it. You'll notice we <laughs> closed it. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> so I, I, I can say, okay, I think implied volatility is going to be 16 in, uh, so I'll go. Hey, I'm going to sell two of these, and I'll just throw on a butterfly. And I don't put this butterfly on, please, okay? <laughs> That's about 100 points away, and... So you're projecting uh, higher vols than what we're showing. Right uh, I always estimate, when I figure out, this number here is going to let me compute compute a standard deviation based on this number, okay? Mm-hmm. So I'm buying one. Did I sell two of those? at the mm-hmm. No, there's the problem. That's not the midpoint. Okay. Minus two. And, okay. Well, I'll just make this flat delta-wise. And, guys, don't put this on. Please. Okay, so we analyze it. Remember, I said we can look at everything over price, changes in price. So we have this. This is option view. Changes in implied volatility. And so I can go minus 5, plus 5 here. Okay, that's what happens if implied volatility goes up. Change that back to 0. And changes in time. This is T plus 1 from today, T plus 17 and T plus 33. So I can start manipulating this, and I go, well, what if the price is here? What if the price is there? What if, what if, what if? Okay? So it becomes an exercise in what happens, you know? Gosh, I wonder what happens if I, let's see, we have this call here. If I move this down here, and this is just hypothetical. One thing I like about option view, and gosh, I've gotten off on a tangent, is that these numbers are easy to, the lines are easy to see. We have something here called superimpose, which allows me to compare my what ifs. And I can reduce the number of lines, and I'll go, okay, I sort of like this. We're in a bull market, and we're going up, so maybe I'll go with something like this rather than the original trade we looked at. You'll notice this is a blue graph. This is a blue position, red graph, red position. So, But I, I like it compared to any other vendors just so much. But I'm going to go back to a regularly scheduled program. And <laughs> I, 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 but I, 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 you will not find a program out there that makes it easier to look at risk analysis. And the the ability to superimpose is just superb. So, gosh, we're, that's a hypothetical uh, disclaimer. So don't do anything I say to do. So let's look at option view and what if. And that's one of the things I just looked at right now.
But the question is, gosh, what am I going to trade? Now, after trading for 20 or 30 years, I started when I was 10. I was a child prodigy. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I, I went down on the, <laughs> But I've traded different things. I traded ETFs. And what's an ETF? You say, okay, it's uh, I, uh, IWM, which is based on the Russell 2000, uh, the Spider. They tend to be smaller than some the indexes based on the futures. I've traded futures. It's, it would be the ES is a future. Wheat options are a future. And equities. I stood in an equity pit for 20 years. I traded AOL. I traded, gosh, a laundry list of stocks. Rockwell, when the Challenger went down, I was there. Oh I was God. on the floor. Oh, yeah, that was uh, pretty amazing. Because, quite frankly, we're sitting there watching the screen, and it was like, oh, my God. But the whole thing is, at that point, I could not put – I had to, to hand signal to a clerk at the edge of the trading floor to sell stock to adjust my position. They would then call the floor of the New York Stock Exchange a, uh, a runner – would go out to the Rockwell Post and give my order, and then I would wait for a report saying what the market was. Now, obviously, mm -hmm. the market had changed by the time all that went mm -hmm. along. Things have changed. So in selection, the underlying, I worry about, okay, what type of product am I going to trade? And most of us have an opinion. Now, for the sake, since we're talking earnings, and this is earnings season, let's see how Option View can help me select you know, what's earnings. Or in many cases, if I'm trading equities, I want to avoid earnings. You need to know when you're trading uh, stocks, when the earnings are. But I'm interested in what are the three things that can truly affect the price of a stock or of an option or the F, uh, how well an option strategy will work are the price of the underlying, implied volatility and for those of you who do not trade options yet it's basically a measurement of how much premium is in an option relative to the price of the stock and how many days are left okay so you could have everything's the same it's 15 days of uh, expiration we're trading a 40 strike the stock is at 45 and one stock that 40 call might be at 6, and another one, that 40 call might be at 9. And that, the difference is implied volatility. Implied volatility. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, as a trader, I'm very concerned about liquidity. And what liquidity, a good way to figure out what that is, is daily option volume. And the higher the volume, the narrower the difference between the bid and the ask, number one. And number two, uh, the easier it is to trade, to get a trade on, to get it off. We used to refer to uh, the situation as trading by, uh, uh, by invitation, and, and that's something I try to avoid. So here's what we, I do. Okay, let's try and identify things that meet these requirements. Of course, mm -hmm. why am I having, aha. There we go. There we go. Here we have something called survey. So I'm going to go back to, we're going to close this. Can everybody, uh, I can't see chat from the students. Can everybody see my, uh, the option view screen? I can, yeah. Okay. Because uh, I, I, I don't have access to chat. Uh, you guys, if you have a question, raise your hand, type it in. Uh, and, and Karen will make sure that I get the question. Well, as you can see, we have a number of what they call auto-scan tools. It's a number of ways that I can slice and dice that massive amount of information that's out there in order to help me find something to trade. Now, right now, I think there's 3,900 different products and I call them underlyings that have options. 
and that, and then that's rather overwhelming. In fact, it's totally overwhelming. Well, how am I going to find something to trade? Well, here, look at this. And we will close this. Okay, and I'll go through the process. Okay. Uh, no. I'm, I'm going to, one thing I can do is I can create groups here. Okay. And the way I create a group, and it's really easy, is I just hit a pound sign, and I'll go underlying search. Okay. And that way, I've created a, a a list here where I can say, okay, fine, a group. This is the underlying search. You'll notice that I trade volatility here, so you'll see VXX trading. You'll see indices. What else do I have? Ah, I, I got rid of all my stocks. I have some futures here. So this is like crude oil. Japanese yen, gold. Okay, I have those, but we're, for the sake of for this, we're going to look at something, searching for something to trade. Now, I, is everything okay, Karen? Uh-huh. crackling, okay. I am a premium seller, meaning I sell, I like to sell options. That's one thing you'll learn as you go through training and as you develop your risk-reward comfort zone. You'll find out that you're probably either a premium seller or a premium buyer. Well, as a premium seller, that's going to color my search here. So I'm going to clear this right now. This is a way that I can go through and I can search. Okay, I can pick out... 150 assets if I want to, 100, any number I want to. Now, I, I try to keep it fairly simple. Now, remember, we're trying to pare down the 3,900, 4,000 different products I can trade options on to something that's uh, more achievable. So here, I can look at, and I'll go minimum daily volume. <laughs> Uh, now, this I'll is your liquidity. That. Yeah, this is this where your is liquidity. my liquidity number. Okay, mm -hmm. because here, if I make the if the daily volume's too low, I'm just not going to be able to get it. Minimum price, since I'm selling, you know, do I want to do it in a ten dollar stock or a five dollar stock? Frank doesn't, so I'm going to go twenty five here. Okay. We have a history through NetView where I can look at, geez, two years. And <laughs> if I do a percentile, which would be here, we'll see that. I can use up to five. I use the NetView database. If you had your own uh, <laughs> a database that you wanted to use, you could use that. And you could customize <laughs> this so it would use your own local files. But so we use the NetView database, which is provided, if I'm correct, by uh, OptionView, correct? Right. All of our servers are in New York with track data, but that they are the NetView servers, correct? Right. Okay, well, I want to sell the highest implied volatility, okay? Okay. I, we could sort by the greatest dollar volume of options traded, which is a, another way of slicing and dicing this, okay? But I'm going to do that. And I can sort them based on the highest implied volatility and different ratios here. Well, I'm going to keep this fairly simple. I'm going to uh, actually I'm going to do current implied volatility percentile, and that means where it is in the range of its historical implied volatility. We can, the, we can sort by stocks, indexes, bonds, commodities, currencies, all. Well, I don't want to do all because that's just going to make it confusing. I'm going to go stocks, okay? I'm not going to look at any selected assets. I'm, I'm not going to look at an asset list. This is where you trade a certain finite number of assets. You can do that. So all I have to do is collect go. 
okay? And you'll notice that Tesla has meets this. It trades a lot. Gosh, it trades 26000 a day. Okay? The price is higher than 25 and we'll see that there. I mean, we can close. Oh, geez, Frank, that's not what I meant to do. Survey. I can say, hey, I want to do it by highest implied volatility and go, and it's going to resort it. Okay? And, and Tesla's notice, still up there, yeah. <laughs> oh, it is, okay? And, and so this is – implied volatility is determined by the options. Statistical volatility is determined by the stock. So that's how much the stock has been moving over the past here, 30 days. So if we notice, that there's, a, there's quite a uh, – a difference between those two. If we wanted to see highest implied volatility to statistical volatility, we could go like this, and all of a sudden we have somebody else that's higher. You know, we have uh, Cobalt Inter International versus Medivation. And, and it's, there's a number of different ways we can look at this. Now, one thing you can be pretty sure is when there's this big difference, there's either earnings coming out, the things that can move implied volatility are things like, oh gosh, in the case of a pharmaceutical company, it could be a, an FDA approval. It could be rumors about a takeover. There, there's a number of different things. But so, just like I can do this this way. We'll do it. <coughs> However, anybody, anybody have a specific way they'd like to look at uh, have this sorted? Nobody's saying nope. anything. So. Okay. Well, this is pretty overwhelming, guys. What I want you to take away is, A, that it's easy to select the different ways we can do this. Okay? It's a powerful tool. But, I, I mean, just like with a hammer and nails and a saw and a, a pencil and French curve, you can make various complexities of furniture, too, as you learn how to use those tools. So this is a great tool for the beginner, and it's a great tool for the advanced trader because it allows us to slice and dice a number of ways. So I, I'm going to just go back to it. I'm going to sort it based on uh, highest implied volatility, and we'll go. Now, one thing I can do here, I want to show you, is I can hit just like normal. I can hit Shift, and I can go down. Whoops. It should be easy. Of course, I, did, I wasn't hitting Shift. I was hitting Alt. And I can go through the 100 stocks, and... And why is this not... Control. Oh, well, maybe I control. Oh, you know, I was not hitting shift. Oh, okay. Oh, to there draw. you go. Yeah, I know it's pretty amazing. <laughs> okay, I'm going to minimize this a bit. Um, and um, there, I see what I'm doing. We'll go back to the matrix. Uh, close. Or you could just yeah, right click and copy to the quotes yeah. display. I know. I'm trying to come up with the quotes. I'm just having a rough time getting there. Oh, window. Oh, window. window. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, window. Quotes display. And there we go. Quotes Down to the bottom. Display. I can go here. Okay. And oh, duh. yeah, you have to go back. This to, is called right. underlying search. I wanted to show. Yeah, I had to check. All I have to do is go, we'll back, go back to. to I know how to do this. I just want the survey. There you go. Right. I right click, click on this, and they I can add all these to underlying search. There you go. Okay. Done. Done. Now. 
No. Window. window. Quotes display. There. There we Here's go. Here's everything I had. Now, this is something very I really like about Option View. In any of these groups, I can sort it in a number of different ways. Okay? I can sort it by price just by right-clicking on that. Okay? Price line. I can sort on daily op option volume. Okay. Now, one thing that we're going to add, we're constantly, gosh, Karen can speak to this better and can even better than I, is the amount of new uh, things that have come up and things, I, I should say features. Thing. Mm -hmm. So that's an amorphous turn is amazing. We're going to start <laughs> bringing this up so that we will have, uh, in, in a future release, implied 30-day implied volatility and the 30-day uh, statistical vol. We have that number available right now but for the individual stocks. But so I'm sitting here, and I've sorted this. And, and, and so it's like, okay, fine. But one thing that we have just come up with recently, would you like to obtain earnings announcement dates for all the stocks in this group? Now, if you just have stocks that are out there, okay, regular equities that you follow, this is something very important. So you just right-clicked on notes? I just right-clicked. No, actually, that was a left-click. Left-clicked on the notes header? Yes. Okay. And it comes up with different earnings, okay? And so this is pretty valuable for me because I can sit here and say, okay, what's going on? I can mm -hmm. also, and this is an important thing, any equity you have coming up, you should have always have the earnings up, and you can change it. You know, right, these are all announced earnings. Option View has a relationship with Earnings.com, which is one of the leading providers of earning information, and they bring us this information. I mean, we have something here that says, hey, Kihu, which is a, uh, a Japanese, a Japanese, Chinese Internet company, when is this going to be announced? Up oh, sometime between the 19th and the 23rd. I can look at this, and it'll say, okay, this is going to be announced 4.05 p.m. F5 on, well, it was on July 13th. BMO means before market opening. July 24th, and, yeah. Right, and so we're beyond that date. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, we'll look at August. After market close, is AMC before market opening, okay? And if we're afterwards, usually these are right. But this will be sitting here. Now, you'll say, okay, what for CF Industries, what does that mean? That tells me that they haven't announced the earnings yet, but it's probably going to be right, somewhere that one around August 8th. So oh, I would have I right That's one. Price right line, there. yeah. No, is price that price? Line. No. This one here, uh, CF. CF was May 8th, right. Right. Well, I'm, I know that it probably will be announced in May. They haven't announced it yet, the most recent one we know. But if I look at this, I will know. That we, I know from 30 years of trading that these run on a three-month cycle. So this announcement will probably take place ah, before August. Okay. Before August. Well, what happens, and let's look at Priceline because that's, well, that's, that's pretty intense. That'll tell us something here. Well, I can look at this, and we're starting up something new here. I can look at this, and one thing we know is, remember, I have a pretty high implied volatility, 36. Well, here's another tool provided. I can look at a price chart <laughs> daily, and I can overlay a volatility chart, which is implied volatility. Well, one thing I want to show you guys is, amazingly enough, guess what happens after earnings come out? We Implied volatility collapses. 
Okay. It's like clockwork, practically. Uh, every three months. Now, the question is, what happened here? Why is there a four? I have no idea what happened there. I mean, it's like they changed the earnings cycle. Well, one thing, you can see that it also climbs up. And it climbs up to about this level. Well, August 8th is next week. And so we have a couple more days of climbing before this collapses. Probably go here, a good chance. You'll notice that every time there's an earnings, there is some sort of stock behavior. So we can look there and see that the stock had, geez, a significant, uh, we'll move that. We can look at these price gaps every three months. You get used to this. But these are the sort of tools that allow us to do it visionary. Now, one thing, and the question is, we know this moves. We know the earnings are going to take place in August. Well, here's a few important things to know. If you're going to be, if somebody, if you decide, well, I'm interested in Priceline, and you don't know when earnings are, you're asking for problems. Because if we can want to go back to the price chart, you know, do you really want to be trading it? when it moves $50 in a day. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it, it, remember, chance favors the prepared mind. So if you're trading mm -hmm. equities, you want to know when earnings are for any of these equities. And I just showed you another way to do that. Now, we can also search stocks that are in the next few days. And let's see, is this Trade Finder? Does that do it for Al? We can search got, stocks that are doing what, what in the next few days? That have earnings in the next few days. Now well, here. And specifically, I once again have... Okay. Okay. If you'll notice, we have Survey. We have OpScan. We have Trade Finder. We have Status. Okay. That's for this specific account. Uh, OpScan, okay, it'll allow me to uh, trade. We, we have reports that will allow us to find, you know, breakouts to the upside, breakouts to the downside. Different reports that w will fit your bias in trading if you're a premium seller, a premium buyer. So, you know, fat call premiums on quiet stocks. These are things that we have put together. Okay. Okay, go. Stocks, whoops, no OpScan formula. Duh, Frank. <laughs> but, and, okay. View report. Yeah, you just click on the report. For yeah, it. You and view it. Then we can view it. I'm having a rough time today. Yeah, I don't know, double-clicking it. I don't know why that didn't bring up the report. Oh, you know there what? I go. single-clicked it. Oh, okay. I, I, I mean, actually, I double-clicked it. But this is, you know, Okay. these are things that will allow us to go, okay, fine, I want to trade it. But if you th notice... This is something that had very high implied volatility. That did not come up on my original report because it didn't have the necessary daily volume, I almost guarantee. So these are things, but so we can look at, you know, Tesla, earnings soon. The hot stock, the, the stock that has moved the most this year. Okay. Well, one thing I know is when I look at this, volatility chart after earnings gosh we'll look at it daily there's a collapse of about that went from 60 to 40 it went from 100 and that was earnings to 60 I mean there's a, a pretty good job we're climbing now but if I put on a trade and we'll just say hey it's at 135 I don't think it's going to go above 
180, I'd sell one of these, and I don't, that which is $45 higher, and I don't think it's going to go below 90 because nobody expects it to make money anyway. Minus one. Well, it's a premium seller. I'd look at this and I'd analyze it, and I'd say, well, okay, what do I want to do? Do I want to do this trade? Quite frankly, I'm not real excited about this trade. You know, I have my zero here. The most I can make is a hundred dollars, which is seven percent based on it. You'll notice we have rates of return. So I'll start going through this and I'll say, no, no, no. Okay. The other alternative is, okay, well, maybe we buy some premium. So I'll buy a call, and I buy a put. This is what we call a straddle. Okay, and we'll start looking at it, and I'll analyze. I'll say, okay, do I think, you'll notice, that I can lose. That I'm makes spending. a big move either way. We're, we're okay. Right. If it makes a big move which would be down $20, basically, or up $20. We can actually see what that real price is. Remember, this is an August option expiring, uh, I believe it's probably the 15th. Like, so, but, yeah, the but it allows me to do that, and I'll be going, well, one thing I do know is the day afterwards, we're probably going to lose 30 points in premium, volatility points. Well, you're going to need that move in T plus zero. Because remember, that's the August 7th. I believe August 7th. What's today? Third, fourth, fifth. That's Today's Tuesday. Today's the first. Oh, today's mm -hmm. the first? Mm -hmm. Friday's the second. Saturday the third. Sunday the fourth. Fifth, sixth, seventh. Next Wednesday. Okay. This is what's going to happen next Wednesday, it, it, or Thursday, okay? After the earnings have been announced, immediately, they know where it's going to go. Now, we know the volatility is going to do this. We don't know where the price is going. But this allows me to do what ifs, what ifs. Now, you're going, well, Frank, I thought you were going to tell me what to trade. Sometimes it's ever, the, making a choice is quite often a, a a process of rejecting things. It's what if, what if, what if. Now, I'll go through here and I'll say, you know, I'm not going to trade it with John's money, let alone my money. I think it's too risky. But what that means is if I'm reading something and I go, boy, I want to trade Tesla, you better know when the earnings are. Well, one thing that happens is if we go back to the quotes, I know when all the earnings are. I'll look mm -hmm. there. So mm -hmm. I know if it's, you know, in April, or it's going to be July, you'll notice there's nothing in April. When we see something that's the 8th of May, that's telling me that the earnings have not been announced yet, specifically announced. We're also fine-tuning this. And one thing I would like to mention is double-check earnings reports from anybody. Okay, this is part of the wisdom I can let you know. Uh, w one of the beauties of this is another thing that with Option View is this is a way to double check. So here I clicked on News and I get, okay, Frank. Oh, can I just interject? Uh, Carl you can always Tesla, interject. Good. Tesla is expecting earnings on August 7th minus 36 cents a share. That's the expectation. Right. right. So I'll do that at times. And I'll look here and I'll say, hey, this is Tesla Motors. And it'll give me the Yahoo news. Okay. Oh, geez, Frank. So. And you can have it bring up Bloomberg News. If you have some other news you subscribe to, you can bring that up. And it's one of the handiest things around. It's just bringing up that news, whether it's Yahoo Finance, Google Finance, Bloomberg Finance. I can pick up any of those and uh, to do that. 
now, this is really quite a mouthful, or mouthful. It's an, an awful lot to go through. But, you know, we have Trade Finder here, which will allow us to go through and look at different strategies, okay? We can look at targets, okay? A price target, a date target, okay? Goals, okay? And we can compare. So there, there's an awful lot of things that we can do. So I could go asset list and uh, selected assets. I don't have an asset list created. But there, there is so many different ways we can uh, slice and dice this. Now, does anybody have any questions right now? Let me see. Where are the chatter boxes? <laughs> oh, I know. I have and, none. And I hope I haven't overwhelmed anybody because the goal here is to show just the massive amount of flexibility we have, you know, or alternatives. Quite frankly, most people only use a few percent of what's offered. You know, we use... And I'll go back. Jeez, Frank. So far, no questions, Frank. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, too. It's, it's I'm not really sorry. But, you know, what it's most important for is to allow me to figure out how to do strategies, you know. One strategy that a number of us like to use is something that we would call a butterfly or an iron butterfly, okay? And so what happens is, okay, how am I here? I'm 160, 130, that's 25, so I go to the 110. Go long one there, and I analyze. And then the question becomes, how does it look as I move this down along a continuum? And this is where the what-ifs are just wonderful. And I analyze this, and then I superimpose. And I start going, okay, where do I feel most comfortable doing this? How is this changing? You know? And so far, I don't analyze. You'll notice that I am looking at profit and loss here superimpose. Right now, I'm, I'm, I like the green one a little better, I think. Close. Because I'm trying to increase my probability of uh, profit. And so this is where the difference that, that makes a difference is really apparent for option view versus other products. So superimpose. You know, some people say, well, you know, I, I, I want to know that I can make this much. And I'll be looking, I'll say, but, you know, I'll take another five points to the upside and the downside mm -hmm. here to protect that. And mm -hmm. my maximum loss is only 600. It's not 900. So what's going to happen is go. a tool like this, with this good, this fine of graphic presentation, is going to allow us to make educated, I don't want to say guesses, but educated decisions and uh, to, to look at things that be able to say, does this fit my own personal risk-reward comfort zone? I so got Karen, a question. You yeah, can from, have as many from... questions as you want. From Lewis Tomsick, have you used the view horizontal skew function, and if so, how do you adjust it? Well, I know that, um, to, just to answer that myself, I know that uh, Steve Lentz and Len Yates both did a webinar on that. Have you, if, if Lewis, if you've watched those, I know they go into quite a bit of detail on how to use this, the horizontal skew model. And that's in version 7.30, and we're on 7.31. I don't, um, I don't know 
If Frank, well, here's have you been what you can it? do. Well, and it's brand new, okay? But you'll notice here it is, right there. Now, can I make this bigger? Uh, this is the Tesla no, three-year volatility cone. That's you know the high and low where it's basically gone. And this is the 30-day vol. Now, if you'll look here, <laughs> we have a 30-day implied volatility. The green is the 60-day volatility. And we have that, okay? And th th you'll notice they, they're they adjusting, too. Now, one thing that Len has put together is he can enable CEV vol uh, volatility, okay? So we can expect right now that the 30-day volatility will go down 30%. And that's, what's the, how would I say? The concept is mean reverting. And what happens is, you notice that we had a 30-point move, and I ballpark that myself, okay? That our general move after earnings is about 30 points. So what they're telling us is right now, this is 30% higher than what 30-day volatility generally is. A good way to look at that is, notice the 77 here, Karen? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and that's 47. They're, they're comparing so that to the 47.3. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and so right now the 60-day, this is a 30-day, this is a statistical vol. So we mm -hmm. expect it to approach the statistical vol. Uh, this uh, implied vol, this volatility to approach that. Now let's see, we can go okay. Okay. Gosh, so you can slice and dice this so many different ways. And this will give me the at the money implied volatility. <laughs> I feel like so, I'm in cooking class here. <laughs> slice oh, well, it is. <laughs> and, and, you know, and sometimes I sit there and I'll say, yeah, I know what the recipe is, <laughs> but I don't think I'm going to make that. <laughs> because I'm exactly. having 12 people over for dinner, and <laughs> the last two times I made it, the souffle collapsed. So I am not making soufflés. That's and I, I mean, collapse. that's what we do. <laughs> because we have to balance a volatility collapse mm -hmm. versus a change in the price of the underlying. Remember I talked about mm -hmm. time, move, change in time, change in implied volatility, and change in the price the of the price. underlying. Those are like mm -hmm. the three things we need to know to trade. And these help us manipulate these, you know, analyze. And so I'll go, okay, zero here. That's where we are now. And what happens if we go down 30%? Oh, that's minus three. But minus 30, all of a sudden, you'll notice that we have a pretty a safe comfort zone in, I guess, uh, the seventh is what, six days away? Mm hmm. So I guess look at T, we can look at this here, T plus five, the second one. This gives us a pretty good idea of what's going to happen. So we're pretty good between. 150 and 115 or 117. Gosh, well, we need somebody young there to help me. 117.79. That's that break even right there. Okay, and so that could, and that's 151.42. So Click that on the bottom of that purple line and just see if that there can. No, the the vertical dashed purple line where the break even is listed. Click right at the bottom. There we go. Oh now it gosh! Tilts, it tilts it so I can actually see it a little bit better. Okay. Well, my head turned pretty easily. Gosh, <laughs> I learn something new every day. Yeah. Gosh, you can that's click, wonderful. click, click. You can click it three or four times, and it goes to different break even places on the graph. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. And. Now, one thing I want to show everybody here, I have, uh, let's see, option view. We have, 
Now, where is that? No. What you looking for? I am... Uh, if it's your PowerPoint, I can't help you. Uh, it's not my PowerPoint. Uh, they don't. I, I want to cancel that. Mm -hmm. And... Um, um, I'll do this. Now I can do this. What's happening? There, we have a blog too, which will help you and condense. Oh, that's what you wanted to show. Okay. <laughs> and, and this is—I'm uh, going to show you what I write every week. Okay. Of course. And that's the, of the, course. the good stuff. <laughs> okay. So everybody I'm, can see this, or how do we get to your blog? Uh, can you see my uh, Google? Did that yes. pop up? Okay, mm -hmm. I'm going to go discover options blog now Karen okay mm -hmm. well if you guys send her an email and what's your email address Karen at optionview.com okay she will send you the link to this every week okay I call gosh who would believe that I call my blog the prepared mind <laughs> I have a week in review okay what happened last week Okay, so I wrote about that. This is the behavior of the different major indexes over the past week, where they closed, what the number change was, the percentage change, the percentage year-to-date, and the volatility the impl volatility of each of these indexes. It's a 30-day moving average volatility, and it gives us a sense. Then I tell us what the coming week is going to maintain. I net it out, okay? We had the FOMC meeting, earnings reports, and employment. So here, I'll go through here, and these are the different reports that we'll have by day. So today, okay, if you had looked, and is today Thursday already? Mm hmm Ugh. Okay, we had the East, uh, European Union PMI manufacturing. 4 a.m., a Bank of England announcement, and there were, they didn't change anything, and the EU, uh, the central bank announcement, they didn't change anything. Here are the earnings for the day before the opening and after the opening. Well, after the opening today, let's see, we had LinkedIn. It was at 203.98 oh, yeah, uh, on last Friday when it closed. The implied volatility is 54.5. And it was after. This is the expected earnings per share, what people think yep, is $0.04. Cents. Now, I have no idea what LinkedIn is doing after the close. Sometimes I, I, I'll take a check and say, okay, what is it doing? And here, I will go. So you do the blog uh, how often? I Every week comes out mm -hmm. Sunday, every Sunday, and I go through the following Monday. So this is this coming Monday. You can look and see what earnings are. So it's different ways to uh, uh, view what's going on. So what some people I know will print out the individual day or print out the whole thing, and they'll on their bulletin board they'll have what's going on tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Or they'll look at this. This Good is idea. another thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's just one of the many things that comes from your relationship with uh, uh, Option View. Now, my question is, what happened to Linked? L-N-K-D. Because it's trading after the close right now. And okay. it's 225 bid at 226. Guess wow. what? They wow. like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Up 10%. That's, so if I had sold something, and this is the ga ca caveat, guys, okay, this is where I want you to be careful. Okay, we'll go down. Uh, I'm sure, I wonder if LinkedIn with us. Forget it. I'll just do it this way. Yeah, there we go. Oh. Okay. Oh, there it says 213. I thought you said 225. No, this is where it closed today. Oh, okay. 
after there is trading after hours and so right now it's trading at oh it's 226 bid at 22646 and uh that is trading in what they call the third market Okay, so okay. we're not bringing that in, but you're seeing where are no, you seeing no, that No, no, but it's something to know. We aren't bringing where that are you, in. Where are you seeing that? Where are you seeing the 226 price? I, I just I went to uh, um, uh, Yahoo like, Finance. Oh, okay. Okay, and it just said it was doing that, but so I'm looking there, and so the question is, it's actually moving a little less than expected. We could look at this right now. And say, okay, we know it's moved 12 bucks so far, but I can add this price and the 210 foot price. That's 1970. Okay, that adds up to 1970. And they were expecting <coughs> this to move about, oh, $18. $19, up or down. That is what the, these prices were predicting. Yeah, I can add those two together and that, and look at the break-even points. So interesting enough, it moved less than the options traders were predicting by okay. about $5. Things you'll learn along the way. But uh, so, gosh, I, I've, I've filled up your head with an awful lot of uh, important information. If you have any questions, okay, Please give me a call. Now, don't give me a call. Send Karen an email, and uh, I'll answer any questions, and she'll forward it to me. And uh, I'll answer uh, any questions you may have to assist you in understanding this better. Or she may be able to understand it. And, what, Karen, what's your email again? Yeah, it's Karen at OptionView.com. Also, you know, Frank is one of our mentors, and we have a very big special on the uh, first level of mentoring for anybody who's new to trading, who wants to learn a little bit more. So that's good through tomorrow, August the 2nd. If you want to give me a call, I'll go over that with you. Um, and we do thank you for listening in today with Frank, and um, I hope you enjoyed it and got some good information about what if, what if, what if. <laughs> <laughs> what if. And more. <laughs> okay, prepare your mind. Prepare your mind, exactly, through the okay. use of option view. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate You're it. You're welcome, Karen. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye.